Welcome to Mass Transit Commute. Publish is a core concept in Mass Transit, and the publish method is one of the most commonly called. It appears pretty simple. You call publish, you pass it a type, and it puts the message out on the broker. Now in this case, I'm publishing the submit claim message, and the submit claim message is going to be configured on RabbitMQ as an exchange. And because the namespace of my program is publish, it's going to use the namespace and then the name of the type. So publish colon submit claim. That exchange on the broker is going to be connected to any consumers I have. So the consumer I have is the claim submission consumer, which that receive endpoint has both an exchange and a queue created. The exchange is called claim submission, the same as the queue, and it routes those messages directly into that queue. So when I publish a message, it goes through that pathway. Now this behavior can be customized a number of different ways. For instance, if I don't like the name submit claim, I can just change the entity name to something a little more appropriate for my needs. Like say I want to use contracts dash submit claim, just something different. Now when I run the actual program, it'll go in and it'll reconfigure the broker. I have this set up to delete everything on the broker. You'll have to go out and clean up the broker and get rid of the old types. But now you can see contracts dash submit claim is the type that I have in there. So that's one way to change the name of the topic or exchange that is used to publish the message. Another way I can change that is I can actually set it in the bus configuration. So I can come down here and specify config.message. Uh, what's my type? Submit claim. I can say message.set entity name. I could say my submit claim. It doesn't matter what I put in here. It's, it's totally up to you. Now when I go out there and look at it, you'll see that that exchange has that name, my submit claim. When I come out here and look, you'll see that's the new change, and the bindings are the same. So that's one way to change the type. Another way I can do it is in mass by specifying a custom entity name formatter. So this is different than an endpoint name formatter. Endpoint name formatters affect the queue names. Entity name formatters affect the exchange or topic names. So here I could come in and say, okay, well, for the message topology dot set entity name formatter, and I've already created one that just uses the name of the class with uh, contracts in front of it. It's a simple method, um, contracts dot, you know, so something a little different. Now when I run this and I go back and look at the exchanges that are created, you'll see that I have a contracts.submit claim once it refreshes. So contracts.submit claim is now the name. And if I had other message types, they would uh, be reflected appropriately there. So that's another way that we can do it is by just using an entity name formatter. And you can then overload certain types and say, well, if, it's, if it starts with this or ends with that, anything you really want to put into your code for that. Um, there is some other aspects of the exchanges that we can get funky with. Uh, for instance, I know that I'm going to publish that message type, that submit claim. Well, as I'm configuring the bus, I can actually configure the exchange properties. So you can see, because this is RabbitMQ, I can set things like durable. I can set alternate exchanges. I can set the exchange type if I want to use direct exchanges and bind to routing keys. All of those things are available. One thing that I think is kind of fun is the bind alternate exchange queue. And what this does is I can just say, give me an alternate exchange and an alternate queue. And what we'll find is that this is a way of when you publish a message, if there are no consumers, that queue will get a copy of it. So let's say I disable my consumer and run this. So I'll have no consumers bound to that topic when I create it. When I go out here and I look at the contract submit claim, you can see that alternate exchange is set and it's durable. And if I go out and look at the queues now, I can see that my alternate queue has that message because there were no consumers configured for it. So that one message is out there. And if I go out and I put my consumer back so that we're now actually subscribing to that message, we'll see that the queue will, the alternate queue will still be there, but it will be empty this time because there was actually a consumer that received the message. So in this case, the consumer consumed the message already and it doesn't end up in the alternate queue. 
So that's kind of the way Publish works. Uh, I'll show how it works with other brokers another time, but uh, hopefully that was a good bite for you and thanks for joining.